Hey everybody, today we are talking about how to sex chicks and tell if they are male or female. I'm in my bird room right now, so you might hear some parrots, you might see some parrots in the background. And this batch of chicks I have here are, um, let's see, about a, less than a month old. But as far as being able to tell gender from the beginning, let's just start with some basic facts. Okay, so some people say you can tell before they hatch by the shape of the egg versus if it's round or pointed. That is not true. That's a myth. You cannot tell by the shape of the egg what the gender is going to be. Once they hatch out, you can kind of start to see with most breeds and even mixed breeds, the females will tend to feather out faster. And also the shape of the feathers on the wings with most breeds can kind of tell you if it will be a male or female. So on the wings at around three days old, the feathers will be more uniform in growth, whereas the male chicks, a lot of times you'll see a round section with just a couple feathers on the bottom. The feathers kind of look to be in the shape of a semicolon. Um, and again, they feather out slowly with the males. Once they start to be a week or two old, you can tell by the way the comb is shaping. Whoops. It's gonna be a little chaotic in the bird room. Um, so a male chick's comb will be rounded at the top and a hen will stay flatter. I'm gonna show you these combs. You can see what I'm talking about as far as comb shape. Some of these sticks I have here are frizzled. So this one, this is a tiny flat comb. See that? It is not rounded. It is completely flat and small. So this one is probably a female. As opposed to some of these other ones with the larger, more rounded combs, are probably males and you can also tell by their behavior okay because this one I'm gonna show you has been squaring off with another one in the brooder that has the same type of comb so I believe those to be males see how that's rounded there it's larger it's more pink and it's rounded so that is probably a male sometimes you can tell early on also by foot size the males tend to have larger and longer toes, which makes sense, right? Because a rooster weighs more, they have thicker and longer legs, so they'll have bigger feet to support their weight. So let's take this one here. This is either 100% salmon favoral or a mix, the salmon favoral being the rooster that this chick came from. Now, also, a good thing to do is to look up on the internet your chick's sexing by breed. That's the best way that I have done it. Here you can see comb, rounded, a little bit bigger. And like I said, the behavior tells me, squaring off with the other ones with larger combs, that it's probably a male. Now, when I say look them up by breed, because the coloring patterns of a lot of male chicks will be different than the hens. Um, I used to call them salmon favorals, but it's actually a French word, so it's favoral. But anyways, um, once they get a little older, you can tell the male chicks by the saddle and hackle feathers, which I'm going to take my camera outside and I'll show you some older chicks and tell you what I'm talking about as far as saddle and hackle feathers. Now with some breeds, you can see 
a spot on the top of the head that's a different color, usually it's a yellow spot, that will indicate male right off the bat. Um, when I had Dominique chicks and Bard Rock chicks, those are the ones, some of them, that will have the big yellow spot on the head and you can tell right away what gender they are. Here is a picture I'll show you of um, a lavender or pinton with that yellow spot and that would indicate male chicks. Now another early indicator is how the feathers start to come in. Again, this would be after the third day to the second week after hatch. I have a parrot with me now. Um, okay, so I'll show you what I'm talking about here. As the feathers come in, most of the breeds, you'll see the females get feathers up here by the top of the wings on the shoulder area before the males and they will develop tails faster than the males and when i say you know go on the internet look it up by breed sexing um there's some great diagrams out there that show you how the different genders per breed feather out Due to copyright infringement, I can't share those diagrams with you, but they're out there. There's a great one about cochins, for example. Now, it can be hard to sex chicks with certain breeds like silkies. However, with that breed of chicken, the male chicks tend to form like a mohawk, a narrow head poof, versus the females that have a rounder head poof. And they also develop a more narrow tail with streamer feathers in it versus the females that will have a more rounded. So with silkies, for hens, you'd be looking for the universal round head poop and the round tail. Now patterns of chicks' feathers, um, you can tell gender on sex-linked breeds. This means that they're going to be different right off the bat with their coloring. And also, if you take a striped rooster with or a striped hen versus a solid pattern of the opposite sex and have chicks, the males will be striped right off the bat and females will be less striped. So that's what sex linked means. You can tell more early what gender they're going to be. So now I will show you my chicks that are outside. They are roughly two months old and it's a little easier to tell at that time. And I'm going to show you how I can tell on those chicks as well. So when I talk about saddle and hackle feathers, the hackle feathers on a rooster are at the base of the neck and they will be a pointy feather that kind of drapes down a little bit and the saddle feathers are at the base of the tail and those will be pointy as well and drape down. It does take a while for those types of feathers to form and come in so that's not a method that you can use early on. Okay, so these are my older chicks that I moved outside. I believe I have three hens and one rooster. This is the other salmon favorel that I have. Now when you look that up by breed, it says that the male chicks will form black feathers and this one does not have black feathers on it so it could be a mix um, where I got the hatching eggs from was a mixed flock but you can see wattles have grown in large combs starting and this is the only one out of these four that tends to peck at me a little bit now I do work with the chicks to get them to be friendly I spend a lot of time with them and I have some methods that I use to get the chickens to grow up to be nice and friendly I'll do a video about that in the future so the other three 
Again, the rest of the three are definitely a mix. Small combs, no waddles coming in yet, really. Little bit of waddle there, but tiny, tiny comb. Now, I have a couple friends who are chicken breeders, and they swear by the method of raising your heat in the incubator just a little bit, like going more towards 100 degrees, maybe 99.8, somewhere around there. And they tend to hatch out more females by just that little increase of temperature. I did not do that when hatching these eggs. However, I did put a towel over most of the incubator. It covered about three-fourths of it to keep the heat in. And out of all these chicks I'm showing you today, I have seven hens and four roosters, although one I'm not sure. So I might have eight hens, three roosters. So that's a pretty good ratio. And I do think it's worth trying to do the tiny bit of temperature increase to get more hens. Now, another method that I use, you might have heard of this, is called the leg dangle method, where you pick the, up the chicks and you see if their legs hang down low or if they draw the feet up by the body. Now, when I first started reading about this method, it said that if the legs dangle, it's a female, and if they pick the legs up, it's a male. However, I have found the exact opposite. And with this method, what they do with the chicks, it's kind of actually horrible. They hold them by the head. You don't have to do that. Please don't do that. That can cause neck injury. It's not a proper way to do that. All you have to do is hold them. This is, I mean, I've used this method. Some people say it doesn't work. It has worked for me. See how that leg is being picked up there? And this is the one with the tiny comb. That, to me, says female. The interesting thing about the leg dangle method is even as adults, when I hold my roosters like that, the legs hang down real low and straight. And the hens, especially egg-laying hens, the legs, they'll pick them up and draw the feet into by the body. Now let's try this one here. This is for sure a rooster. Look at that. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> you gotta make sure they're still. He's not wanting to cooperate. Let me see if I can get another one here. Come here. Let's check this out. Leg is up on that side of the body. That's a hen. This one I'm pretty sure is a hen. And we're drawing the feet up by the body. When I say legs dangle i mean straight down let's see if i can get this one i think is a rooster again did we check this one let me see legs are up pretty sure it's a female the interesting thing about that too is there we go see what i'm talking about straight down with the legs totally dangling and that is a rooster. I've used that method myself for many years with many batches of chicks and I've tried this as early as three days old and I seriously have found that if the legs hang straight down like that it turns out to be a rooster. You looking in the camera? So I don't know. No method is a hundred percent but that method works for me. The interesting thing about this is I have older hens who no longer lay eggs, and once they're out of that egg-laying age, their legs dangle like a rooster. <laughs> I don't know. I just find it super interesting. I'll continue to use that method because it works for me. I hope these tips helped you. Some hatcheries, they'll do chick sexing. That method is pretty invasive. They go in through the vent. First, they squeeze the poop out. It's very, very hard on the chicks. People who do chick sexing at hatcheries have a ton of training to do that. Some of them train for more than a year to do that, but it's they still make mistakes. I know people get upset when they order hens and there's a rooster in the mix. It's very, very hard to do the vent sexing, and there is room for error. 
So again, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications about the new and upcoming videos. Thank you.